Often, there are hidden truths and old tales that get lost with each generation. As such, there is an untold story about the United States that begins in the 1600s. Prior to English entrepreneur and Pennsylvania founder William Penn's arrival to the New World, this continent was inhabited by various indigenous Indian tribes. Once the Swedes and the Dutch began settling in the area they bartered for land and fought over it. After William Penn arrival, the land was sectioned out to various hamlets. The indigenous tribes started to die off because of fighting or disease and most of them left the river areas. Mills started to appear in the late 1600s and early 1700s, which created a boom in food production. This led to more people settling in the tri-state area. Then in the 1800s, the result was that Philadelphia had the world's largest and most diverse growth spurt of industrial sectors, which of course played a huge role in the Revolutionary War. In the 1600s, the King's Highway was built to go from Boston, Massachusetts to Charleston, South Carolina. This highway is now the oldest road in continuous use in the nation. In Philadelphia, William Penn had the King's Highway Bridge built by residents via Royal Edict. This bridge, built in 1697, is the oldest roadway bridge in continuous use in the nation. When it comes to Philadelphia, however, Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell are still the popular tourist attractions. What people are shocked to find out is that delegates of the Continental Congress often met to discuss their independence from Britain in taverns in Frankfurt, now a neighborhood of Philadelphia, before the consolidation of 1854. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and other important people would often travel to, work in, and sleep in parts of Northeast Philadelphia. Fast forward to the Civil War when there was a population growth of African Americans, and you will find that residents of Northeast Philadelphia played a big part in the abolishment of slavery and the Underground Railroad. When Thomas Holm created the first map of Philadelphia in 1687, the grid system that is in use throughout America first made an appearance. This was an efficient way of sectioning off the city as well as making it easily accessible. Then the Indian trails started to become major roads and they had to be widened for horse and carriage travel and the area started to become more industrialized. From those times came so many unheard stories that revealed a unique perspective on the lives of our forefathers and those who brought our nation independence. There is a great story about Lydia Dara, a woman who warned American troops of a British invasion during the Revolution. She crossed British lines and found out about the ambush, then left, stating she needed to get more flour from the mill to make bread for them. She did get more flour, but also stopped at an American encampment in Northeast Philadelphia to warn Washington's troops. Now let's talk about Frankfurt Bridge. The Frankfurt Avenue Bridge, also known as the Pennypack Creek Bridge, the Pennypack Bridge, the Holmesburg Bridge, and the King's Highway Bridge, erected in 1697 in the Holmesburg section of Northeast Philadelphia in the U.S. State of Pennsylvania, is the oldest surviving roadway bridge in the United States. The bridge, built at the request of William Penn, to connect his mansion with the new city of Philadelphia was an important link on the King's Highway that linked Philadelphia with cities to the north, Trenton, New York, and Boston. On March 10, 1683, the Pennsylvania General Assembly passed a law requiring the building of bridges across all of the rivers and creeks along all of the King's Highway in Pennsylvania, from the falls of the Delaware, at Trenton, NJ to the southernmost ports of Sussex County, now part of the state of Delaware. The bridges, which were to be completed within 18 months, were to be 10 feet wide and include railings along each side. The areas on either side of the bridges were to be cleared to facilitate horse and cart traffic. Each bridge was to be built by male inhabitants of the surrounding area. Those who failed to appear were to be fined 20 shillings. In 1970, 
the bridge earned an award by the American Society of Civil Engineers Philadelphia section as an outstanding engineering achievement and a historic civil engineering landmark. A bronze plaque was placed on the western parapet in commemoration. It is stories like these that need to be told. The King's Highway and the historic locations along the road are the foundation of the film, augmenting that with in-depth historical coverage, along with expert speakers, archival footage, historical documents, photographs, maps and artifacts, the documentary is set to give us a glimpse into the past. Time-lapse and walk-through footage of various locations will allow viewers to see the beauty that has been all but forgotten. The goal of the film is to not only spread awareness about the historic value of this area, but to also showcase the historians and preservationists that are fighting to keep our beautiful city intact. Ultimately, we are spreading the word that Center City is not the only place America's history is present. The producers have officially launched a Kickstarter page to get support for film festival submissions and DVD manufacturing. With support from local historical societies, civic associations, historians, experts, college professors, museums and volunteers, the King's Highway is causing quite a stir in the communities of Northeast Philadelphia, Center City. Philadelphia has often been the focus of film and TV specials, but no one has ever documented the King's Highway and Northeast Philadelphia. The film will explore the importance of registering historically significant buildings on the Philadelphia Register of Historic Places. Too many buildings are being demolished every day and they need to be saved in order for history to be saved. 